हेलो एंड वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स तो इन दिस लेक्चर दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट लेक्चर एंड इन दिस लेक्चर व्हाट वी विल स्टडी वी विल स्टडी अबाउट So we will study in this lecture. We will study about non-ferrous metal and its alloy. This is the first part, and the second lecture will be on this topic only. But uh, some other points will be discussed there. So this is the fourth lecture of uh, module one, and uh, your subject name is Man material science and manufacturing processes. Now the lecture objective is to note about the different non-ferrous and ferrous alloys, and this is the first thing and another is another is so to know about different non ferrous alloy to know about the composition application and the name of the different alloys of copper such as brass so we will first this is the introduction so ferrous alloy we know about we have already discussed about ferrous alloy ferrous alloy what are the ferrous alloy ferrous alloy mainly mainly ferrous alloy contains mainly iron so if the material the alloys which in which iron is the main material are known as ferrous alloy the ferrous alloy is consumed ex exceedingly large quantities as they have wide range of mechanical properties and can be fabricated with relative ease and economical to produce however the limitation there is some limitation ferrous alloy has some limitation such as relatively high density therefore its uh, ferrous alloy are relatively high density therefore it is heavier in weight now in case of uh, secondly secondly what are the problem comparatively low electrical conductivity is there and the susceptibility to the corrosion is the main problem with the ferrous metal so to overcome this overcome this limitation what is introduced non ferrous alloy non ferrous metals are introduced so many for many application it is advantageous or even necessary to utilize other alloy for example non ferrous alloy having more susceptible more suitable property co co and combination on the occasion of a distinction distinction is made between cast and wrought alloy uh, it, what is cast alloy and what is wrought alloy that is that should be known that should be known the cast alloy means alloy that are so brittle that forming or shaping by appreciable deformation is not possible ordinarily are cast alloy they are classified is uh, classified as cast alloy on the other hand those those that are enable to mechanical deformation are terms that wrought alloy so we have all heard about cast iron and wrought iron the difference between cast iron and wrought iron is the cast iron cast iron can't be deformed mechanically very easily it can be cast iron can be deformed mechanically very easily but in case of wrought iron wrought iron can easily deformed using mechanical deformation so the ductility malleability this type of property will be more in case of wrought iron so this is the difference between cast and wrought alloy so in case of cast alloy cast alloys are more brittle but wrought alloy are more ductile which can be deformed uh, which can be deformed using mechanical deformation now we will see the uh, uh, the advantage of uh, of non ferrous metal alloy and uh, what are the type of metal uh, non ferrous alloys are there so heat treat and heat treating ability on alloy system is mentioned frequently heat treatable designers a designate an alloy whose mechanical strength is improved 
by precipitation hardening etc so in non ferrous alloy in non ferrous alloy the heat treatment is more easy they are uh, easily heat treated so that various type of mechanical property can be introduced in the case of non ferrous alloy so non ferrous metal and alloy are what are the main fun main uh, significance of the non ferrous metal and alloy they are not iron based they are not iron based now the common non ferrous materials are the following metalling element and they are alloy such as copper aluminum magnesium magnesium lead nickel tin zinc and cobalt these are the common metallic alloy common metallic alloy which are non ferrous metallic alloy now in our syllabus the important two copper and its alloy is there and aluminum and its alloy is there so in case of copper and its alloy there is brass bronze so first we will study about in this lecture we will study about copper and its alloy and more precisely we will study about brass we will study about we will study about brass only yes we will study about brass only in this lecture so and in next lecture we will study about bronze and uh, bronze after that we will study aluminum and its alloys so now copper the main grade of raw copper used for cast copper based alloy cast copper means that cast copper means pure, one of the pure form and which is brittle form so cast copper based alloy the main grades of the cast copper grade, based alloy are first one is high conductivity copper high conductivity copper has not less than 99.9% copper you can see that it is the one of the purest form of copper that is high conductivity copper oxygen content is there very less there is some amount of uh, lead and iron but both are less than 0.005% and there is some amount of silver bismuth those are less than 0.001% and electrolytic copper electrolytic copper is used for uh, it is electrolytic copper and it is mainly used for electronic pur electrical purposes so high conductivity copper which is used for electrical purposes next is deoxidized copper where the uh, there is no oxygen content there is no oxygen content and the purity is not less than 99.85 percentage of copper and it is it is alloyed with less than 0.05 percent of arsenic 0.03 percent of iron and 0.003 percent of bismuth and other element may be in order of 0.5 percent 0.5 percent of p and 0.01 percent of lead 0.10 percent of nickel and 0.003 and 0.005 percent of uh, silver and sb respectively so these are the deoxidized copper this means the oxygen content is removed next is arsenical deoxidized copper here the percentage of arsenic is increased increased it is mainly used it is mainly used for welded vessel and tank it is mainly used for welded vessel and tank next is arsenical touch pitch copper this con it, it this is also contain 0.4% of arsenic and there is some amount of oxygen oxygen lead nickel and uh, silver and sb and less very small amount of bismuth and iron uh, so these are arsenical touch pitch copper touch pitch copper next is oxygen free copper in case of oxygen free copper it is Uh, it is oxygen uh, oxygen free copper are contains about very less amount of lead nickel silver and uh, and small small amount of iron and bismuth respectively 
the and it is melted how it is formed oxygen free copper can be formed by melting and cast casting in non oxidized atmosphere so these are the type of main grades of the copper now this copper which are the main property of copper and their alloys the copper is a external a, a excellent resistance copper are copper and it, their alloy are excellent resistant to the corrosion they are non magnetic properties they can be easy to work as they are ductile and malleable so because means the copper is a soft material it has moderate to high hardness and strength high thermal and electrical conductivity this is one of the most important property of the copper so at the at the places where we need high thermal and electrical conductivity copper can be used it can be easily polished plated and possess a pleasing appearance so pleasing appearance can be they are using copper resistance to fatigue and abrasion and corrosion is given by copper it is can it can be soldered braced or welded so this is also an added advantage and very good machinability so machining can be done in case of in copper machining can be done very easily so it has very good machinability and ease of forming alloy with other elements such as zinc sn aluminum phosphorus silicon nickel so by uh, uh, the copper can make an alloy with this all all these elements so these are the advantages these are the advantages of using copper now the applications the applications of copper and their alloys the main application of copper and their alloys are to this two application that is electrical part and heat exchanger secondarily screw screw machine product and various copper for making various copper alloys such as brass and bronze copper is used and it is also used for make household intens utensils so these are the some use and uh, advantages of copper now copper alloy there is some copper alloy so what are the uh, alloys of copper and the properties of them say copper so in the last slide we see that copper normally possesses a excellent corrosion resistance electrical and thermal con for conductivities and formabilities so some copper alloy combine high strength and corrosion resistance which is a desirable condition for marine application some alloy again some alloy some alloy can have high hardness or corrosion resistance high hardness or corrosion resistance which is used in surfacing metals some alloy is selected for decorative application only because of its appearance elements such as aluminum zinc tin beryllium nickel silicon uh, lead form alloy with the copper so copper based alloy mainly classified what are the classification copper uh, based alloy are classified as brass bronze cup um, copper nickels and nickel silvers these are the four type of these are the four type of copper alloy in which brass are the alloy of copper and zinc brass brass what is brass it is a alloy of copper and zinc and bronze bronze is up to 12% of uh, alloying element in case of copper when copper is added with up to 12% of alloying element that is known as bronze copernickel copernickel alloy of copper and nickel it is known as copernickel and nickel silver alloy of copper nickel and zinc is known as nickel silver these are the type of copper now we will study this one by one first brass brass contain zinc as the principal alloying element that means when we add, add copper with zinc that gives us brass so brass are subdivided into three group first one is cu zn alloy means copper zinc alloy this is the purest form of the brass next is copper zinc and lead alloys or leaded brass 
and there is copper, zinc and tin alloy, the, all tin brass. So brass, what are the uh, advantage? Brass has high resistance to corrosion and easily machinable. It acts as a good bearing material. Zinc, secondly zinc. Zinc in the brass increases its ductility along with the strength and brass possesses a, possesses a greater strength than copper. However, it has lower thermal and electrical conductivity. The various type of the brass there is various type of the brasses which we will discuss. First is gliding metal. Second, cartridge brass. Next, admiratory brass, aluminium brass, basis brass, man's metal or yellow metal, leaded 60-40 ratio brass and naval brass. These are the type of brass that we will discuss. So first, glided gliding metal the gliding metal covers ranges from from 5 to 15 percent of zinc it pose and possess the shades of color shades of color from the red of copper to brushy yellow to a brushy yellow so these are the type these types are again this type similar to the ferrous material these types are based on the composition so when there is 5 to 15 percent zinc, the uh, brass is known as gliding metal. Similarly, cartridge brass normally seven, contains 70 percent copper and 30 percent zinc. It can be fully enel condition. It, in fully enel condition, it has high tensile strength, which is over 300 Newton per millimeter square. Now, admirably, admiral the brass, admiralty brass, which contains 71% of copper and 28% of zinc and some amount of tin. Tin. This tin improves the resistance to certain type of the corrosion. This tin improves the resistance to the certain type of the corrosion. Next is aluminium brass. It contains 76% copper, 22% zinc and 2% aluminium. And little arsenic is added to e, to inhibit de zincification Means uh, it is uh, small amount of arsenic is also added. Next is basis brass, which contains 61.5 to 64 percent of copper, and remainder will be zinc. The basis brass is used for press work where the relativity is uh, relativity relatively cheap material is required. And the main commercial firms are sheet, strips, and wares. So next is month, month metal or yellow metal. It contains month metal or yellow metal contains 60 percent of contains 60 percent of copper, 60 percent of copper and 40 percent of zinc, and essentially a, a hot working material. Hot working means the uh, shape or deformation can be done in higher temperature or elevated temperature. In, it is manufactured in the form of hot rolled plate and hot rolled or extruded section in great variety of shape and size. Yellow metal is frequently used at, as a brazing alloy for steel. So what is the use of a yellow metal? Yellow metal can be used as a brazing alloy for steel. Now. In case of leaded 6040 brass, in case of leaded 6040 brass, the chief metal material, the, it, is, it is the chief material, is, the chief material is fed automatic latches and similar machine, usually in the form of extruded bar. Lead, lead are, lead are added to copper and zinc alloy to promote machinability. When lead is added to copper and zinc alloy or munch metal or yellow metal, at that time it is called leaded or leaded 6040 brass. And the lead content ranges from 5%, 0.05% to 3.5%. This is the leaded 6040 brass. And there is another type that is naval brass. It contains 60% of copper and 39.25% of zinc. And 
सम अमाउंट जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टीन द पर्पज ऑफ टीन इज टू इम्प्रूव द रेजिस्टेंस टू द कोरोसन सो दिज आर द टॉप दिज आर द टाइप ऑफ द ब्रश ब्रश एंड वी हैव सीन द एडवांटेजेस वी हैव सीन द एडवांटेजेस एंड द यूज ऑफ द कॉपर एंड इट्स एलॉय नेक्स्ट वी हैव सीन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द कॉपर एंड देयर एलॉय and in detail we have studied about the brass brass what is brass it is a alloy of zinc and copper the major principal principal alloying element in the brass is zinc so that's it for this lecture have a good day and if you have any doubt please please contact with me thank you